Hello. Welcome back to another episode of the Stevie Weeby Show. How you doing there, Stan? You having a good time? Okay, I love you. Special guest tonight, comedian and animator Jamie Loftus. Hey! Hey! Thanks What's for up? coming. Hey! Thanks, thanks for, for coming. Having me. So, what do you think about the place? The place? I was like, it's really cool here. It's open. Yeah. There's a lot of decor. Mm-hmm. I recently just like, I like that word, decor. Decor. Yeah. It makes it sound a little like more Martha all, all this stuff. That qualifies. It's uh-huh. all decor. I I had to. I recently thought that someone might be coming over my apartment. Do you live alone? And so, um, well, I live in a house with three other people, but we don't talk. So I feel like really? I live alone. You don't talk. To, you, yeah. you don't talk to your roommates. We don't. Talk, I have this very strange living situation. Wait, wait, let's hear about your living situation. It, well, it looks normal. I I moved in there. A year ago. Where's it like, there? It's a house? Silver Lake. It's a house Silver. in Silver Lake. I super, I found it on Craigslist a week before I had to move. Wow. And I, I mean, I lucked out in that What was the description? It, oh, geez. We need someone quickly. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is perfect. I need oh. to go somewhere quickly. Uh-huh. Um, and they were just like, it's a very quiet house. The guy who I took the room from um, had, he was like a suit kind of, I think he was like an agent or something. He was he was wearing a suit when I met him. Oh, geez. But he had gone to Burning Man. This was in the summer. He had gone to Burning Man and met a woman at Burning Man and was like, oh. I need it. right. He uprooted his entire life, left me all of his like pretty nice furniture, and he was just like, "I need to go to Oregon with this woman. I can't. Wow. I have to, you know, shuffle off this he had acid." And he had like an awakening. Yeah, which I yeah. super benefited from because yeah. it seemed like he had his life together. He yeah. left me a perfectly wait, put wait, together. What, what, what items did he leave? He left a uh, like this cool bed frame uh, with like a headboard. He I what? got bureaus, which I'd never. I was like living like a disgusting little hobbit before this, <laughs> nice. and then I just like walked into this yeah. this actual life that this man was actively abandoning to go live like Furniture? a hobbit. The circle of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he left furniture. He left furniture. Silverware. He left cleaning supplies. Plates. He left a vacuum. He left plates. He did. Yeah, he left linen in our, our general. Not linen, oh. but but he left a couch upstairs. <laughs> he left linen. a couch. He left a whole couch. So Great basically, couch. what's the what's the value on how much he left? That's like. I mean, it had to five thousand dollars worth of shit. May I? It was a lot of shit, and it was yeah. shit that I didn't. I had no intention to buy. I was gonna have you my gonna, clothes yeah. in boxes yeah. forever. Yeah. But now, I live. I, I've my standard of living is it's, raised because it's raised. It's, yeah, because so he left, and you just rolled in there. I just rolled. Yeah, it like took a week. But the the people who live there are, are strange. So who are the? Yeah, let's talk about okay these <laughs> other people that live there. They yeah. are one of them is great. <sighs> There's one normal roommate, and we talk in the kitchen sometimes. <laughs> That's your relationship? And she's like by far it's a the she? best one. She, yes, two women, two men. Uh, so Wait, wait, two uh, women and two men live in the house. Oh, jeez. But, you'd know, but it seems like no one lives in the house. What, it's, they just hide in their rooms? Yeah, the living space, it's like not, it's frowned upon to be in the common space. Really? <laughs> yeah, but we have two couches uh-huh. and like a whole, and, and like a mini bar, but there, no one's over there and you don't go there. Yeah, you, you just, yeah. It's not done. Where's your room? Upstairs or downstairs? I live in the basement. So like, it's oh, my that's roots. Odd. It's tight. Dude, you got the best yeah. situation. It kind of feels like my own little apartment inside that's of the house. That's your own spot. Yeah, it's you great. You can create down there and write. And it's like the room I wanted when I was a teenager. Really? Yeah, yeah. Do you have a picture of it? 
No, I wish I did. Well, I d- just describe it to the viewers. Well, when I, when I when I moved in, I was like to look at the room. The guy in the suit who was having some sort of Burning Man related crisis yeah. was like, "Yeah, sorry, the walls are weird because every wall was a different fun color." He's like, "You can paint over it." I was like, "No, Whoa. this is the greatest room I've ever seen in my life." Yeah. Is it hard floors? Uh, no, disgusting carpet. Oh. But <laughs> the walls are different colors, okay. and that was tight. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, and then my, my other two roommates, one has lived there since last October, and I just, I like last month figured out what his name was. I figured it out. <laughs> right. And you live with this man? Yeah. What do they I, do? They just hide in the backyard or what's no the idea. deal? I don't know, but they send very long emails about the temperature of the house. But like they're... they wow, that's weird. Right. But they're Can't emails. they just knock on your door and go, hey, can you turn he up would the never, AC? He would never. No, he'd never. And he's also the problem. Whatever. But his... We don't e- have to say his name. His email. I don't... I mean, yeah. I know what it is now. <laughs> okay. Okay. I almost uh, like couldn't. Oh, right. How old is this man? Oh, it could, he could be anywhere between 22 and 40. We, we you don't even know. Kind of a strange looking person where the age is not clear. Wow. I know. What do they do? I don't, I remember like when they, like the reason I never met them was because there was like a house meeting of like, do we want to let this person live with us? And I was like, ah, I can't make it. Probably it's fine. Yeah. And then this person moved in. Uh, and now he just lives with us and he's I th- I remember hearing he corrects SAT tests from home but that can't be right that has to be wrong so he's a teacher <laughs> that doesn't make me no no oh, he just... I think he's like either and also I think he's either an alcoholic I, he is an alcoholic well why do you say that is there like empty like bottles right I mean that's the only way I know these people is through Vodka their bottles? trash oh. What, what, right. kind of, what kind of stuff? What's the evidence? What, well, there is uh, there was like pretty frequently in our recycling like thirty racks of Bud Light, but I'm like that's weird because no Bud one's Light. ever at our house. We don't have Ooh. guests. It's a silent yeah, home. Yeah, that's a uh, beer Who's guzzler. Dream? Yeah, right. But then I was like, Put but who back. is it? And then one day I saw him bringing it out. I was like, oh, it's the weird one. So he's drinking his name. Bud I don't know. In his room. Yeah, and I think like I don't. I, who knows? Drinking and God, I wouldn't correcting feel, SAT I mean, tests. You live there. That's where you live. Yeah. Don't you want to know them a little bit better? Like you at this live point, with though, them. it's too late. I can't it's just be like, late. "Oh, by the way, yeah. who the fuck are you?" <laughs> like, are they trying to get to know you? No, no. And I don't know. I don't know if that's like they having like they seem like they might be kind of an antsy person and maybe just can't yeah. initiate a conversation. Which I, you know, like I get that. Right. But at this point, you know, he's been there for almost a year so it's like what wow, at this point we're never a gonna know this guy for a year yes yeah, at this point i'm never and gonna you know you barely even see him i barely even see him unless That's he's he eats a lot of ice cream he's always what kind of, like dryers out. or ben and jerry's honestly or? i steal his ice cream a lot oh you do <laughs> <laughs> nah hey yeah he has like a uh, great taste in ice cream that. I right. eat probably get a third that, of it. I wonder if he notices. Cream. I wonder if he notices. Yeah. But also, you what was it? You steal pints or what's it do? You steal it right from he, the freezer? No, I wait until it's late at night. And and then you, I oh, you come, creep up on it? I creep up in it. I don't turn on the kitchen light just in case, you know. Yeah. He, which There's would no make me like... <laughs> you know, wait, wait, say that? <laughs> oh, you really... You do, do ninja. You really are a I ninja. do like a ninja style a nin- stealing of his you tip-toe? Whole Foods ice cream. You tiptoe up, I'm up very from quiet. the basement? Yeah, I'm not wearing shoes for this. I have to like, come up you from do, the basement. Yeah, is that the Boston style? Like a creature. Yeah, like yeah. the Boston crab. Like, like, <laughs> like the Boston strangler. Yeah, Just oh, up. yeah. Um, it's kind of odd. You live with these, no family dinners or no like home no, dinners? We would never. No, and then the last guy who is pretty nice, but just like uh, a little bit, seems a little bit too old to have so many roommates. I think I would guess he's in his late 40s. He's Dutch. His name's Yorn. Amsterdam. I don't. I don't know. I. I I have no idea. He's Dutch, though. He's. Um. Well, even that is sort of a guess. He sounds Dutch. And what's his name? Yorn. Yo, oh yeah Yorn, Yorn. right he's Dutch like he's gotta be Dutch yeah Yorn I don't know what Yorn does but yeah. but he's pretty you don't know what Yorn does either he does something involving cameras okay that much I know and yeah. he and he's pretty and he's like very friendly yeah and except for one time he brought home like these I don't know I don't know I was in the the, the common space which is very unusual in the first place and what's Yorn, the common space that's the living room? That's where the, yeah. Okay. But it, I would, but it's a, but no one lives there. No one <laughs> even a bit. There's a fireplace. Yeah. yeah. It's lovely. Wait. It's going to get cold. 
It's gonna. I, You're gonna have to have fires going. I wish I could have a guest yeah. over without my roommates thinking yeah. that that is the most insane thing you could do with a house. Have you brought a boy back to your house yet? Uh, yeah, I have. And then but what's their reaction? Do they get kind of like? I in- out? I introduced them to someone I was dating last year, and they were like looked at me like I have 45 head. like I was just like oh this is so and so and my roommate was like okay I was like you guys are Whoa. mean weirdos they're they're weird and they're then but weird. but Jorn one day when I was sitting in the common space came home and he was like oh yeah I uh I brought you some tank tops and <laughs> Brought you some tank tops. Dead ass serious. He's like, I brought you some tank tops. I was like, What did they look like? Come again. They were Bruce Springsteen tank tops. Oh, those that's cool. Three different who knows where he got them from. Dude, that's cool. Why he had them. Born in the USA. Right. But then he said, but then he he said they looked like they were your size. And I was like, Oh, now that's kind of And then he lost me again. Yeah, I was like, don't there's a little creep. He was right. The creep radar going? He, he was right. Was I the don't creep? think so. Like more of like a weird dad comment. Oh, like, weird These dad. These are probably your size. Yeah. Here's a Bruce Springsteen. You probably like Bruce Springsteen. Kids like Bruce Springsteen. Have you ever bumped Bruce Springsteen in the house? Never. No. Not no. his first album? I've never. I don't I don't know. They know very little about me too, Is there too, music though. in the house or is it just, I picture it no. silence. Sometimes it is silent. Just silence. Because I made friends with my neighbor and, and went to her oh, Christmas party thank last God year. Oh, that, huh? R- right. And so then she. Like, Ooh, breath of fresh air. Well, because they live in an identical house to us, except okay. like seem to like each other mm-hmm. and spend time. So it's a very different vibe. And I went over for this party and she she was like. What happens in that house? People people say no one ever no one ever comes out or says anything, and mm. so it's like even in the neighborhood and a notoriously creepy house. So is your neighbor really? Uh, you get along with her well? She's great, and okay. she was like she was like it's actually great to see someone out of the, outside of that house. Whoa! I know. She said that. Yeah, because she, she's scary, like scary man. Yeah, she's like I've lived here for five years and we never see anyone like come or what go. If these people, it's like kind of like a horror movie. What if, what they're, if like, they're, they're really dead? dead? Right. Yorn could very easily be dead. I don't it's know. Like, why have you seen that movie, The Others, with Nicole Kidman? Yes. It could yes. be that, and you're living uh, in there with dead what a, people. What a cool movie. You know what? Sometimes, because there's uh, cobwebs in here, mm-hmm. and very sometimes spooky. I feel. Like I had that like that idea that what if I'm really dead and like you know what I'm saying because mm-hmm. there's cobwebs around me and I'm but I'm really dead and everyone around me is dead but no one knows it. Yeah, I mean I feel that way every time someone like cuts me in line. I'm just like maybe like instead of being like oh I've been disrespected. I'm like I don't exist. I'm uh, like <laughs> right, right, right. I'm fake. Yeah. No, <laughs> or no. like every time like an automatic door doesn't open for me right away. Mm-hmm. I was like I've been dead for 40 years. <laughs> Do you believe you're from Boston? Let's let's talk about mm-hmm. that. You're from Boston? I am from Boston. Aren't there some there's some history like aren't there ghost stories? There's from some the, ghost shit there some, that went down there. Let's talk about the ghost stories of Boston. Do you, Do you yeah, believe like, in ghosts? Oh, fuck yes. Okay, okay. 100%. Fuck yes. Right. I'll tell you ghosts about, I'll tell you my experience. Extremely but, real. <laughs> but tell me about Boston's ghosts. Well, historically, Boston's got a lot of ghosts. Um, but in my experience, I grew up 45 minutes outside of Boston. And, uh... And and do feel that I like all my cousins and I would have these weird like little paranormal experiences because they lived in this three hundred year old house, um, in Brockton, Massachusetts, where at one point I mean it, it had been around since like the seventeen hundreds. Jeez, mm. no, thank you. Um, in my cousin's room, my cousin Tammy. There was a closet that they had taken the door off of, and on the Who's inside. <laughs> Our family, because they were oh, like, no, the, 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 like, the, the, like, who the hell are they? They're the goblins. The no. story. The story is terrifying. This this must have happened in the early 1900s. The story I'm talking about, but there were claw like little marks on the paint. Wait, wait, what you're doing? Claw gestures. Like someone was trapped in the closet. Get the fuck up. Yeah. And they were scratching out of it? And if I'm remembering correctly, died in there. Like, it was like someone, there was like a woman who had been like locked in for whatever. She she goofed. She did something. Was it like a hidden room? 
No, it was, I mean, I think it was, well, we used it as a closet. I don't know what it was originally. Oh, it was a closet that locked. Yeah, yeah, oh, and that's, that's why the door up. wasn't there anymore. Right. But you could still see, like, some nail marks. Oh, that's fucked up. And that was where we'd, like, keep our books. It you, was weird. You kept your books in there. Yeah, I mean, it was a space. Yeah. But there was still, like, the little, it was painted over, but you could see the little nail you marks. Could steal the nail, yeah. See the nail marks. Yeah. It was scary. Oh, my God. It was God. very spooky. Did you ever actually feel it? It was terrible. In your gut? Like, uh, uh, like the ghostly I th- presence? I thought that I saw a ghost when I was about nine in that house. That house? Yeah. You for and, sure probably did. Yeah, yeah. And all my and all my cousins had similar stories of but just like who was any... It, what did this ghost look like? The ghost? The ghost looks like... Because we did... Uh, my aunt believed in it too. You, and so yeah. she would like... If we would describe a ghost to her, she'd be like, "Oh, let me figure out like who it matches up to in terms of who's like lived in this house." And so she knew she, the history. She yeah, the lineage of the house. She like, was very into that. Yeah. Oh shit. So she thinks I saw a woman who had died in her twenties in the mid eighteen hundreds that had lived in that house because I saw like a woman I guess who somewhere between twenty and thirty walked down the stairs when I was like practicing. Uh, piano like in their living room and I you could see the stairwell and I just saw someone like walk down and I was she and I wearing a dress or she's wearing a dress. Oh I fully I know that's the, the spookiest yeah. and she was wearing a dress. And, and why are they always wearing dresses? I don't know. These goddamn ghosts <laughs> why don't it's these always like a fucking it's either an all black it's either an all black dress or an all white dress. <laughs> With long hair dress. you can't see their face or all something. White dress. Updo and updo lots of jewelry. Very classy. Oh. Whoever she was was very classy. Is jewelry? Jewelry. Necklace? Mm-hmm. You remember that? Yeah, because I fully pissed myself and ran yeah. away. How like old I was scared. I was nine. Oh God. I that's was so scary. For a nine year old girl mm-hmm. to see something like that. And then there's a few stories at my house Ooh. when I was little I man. Well yeah, go go. We love we love the ghost, ghost stories. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh you could do this the whole time. I love this is uh, what I want. Okay, I, I want to hear your ghost stories too. Yeah. Because uh, my my house uh that I live with my mom, dad and brother was it was built in like the fifties and there'd only this been This is Boston. This is uh just outside of Boston, yeah. Well, what's the city? Brockton. Shout out to Brockton. Yo, Brockton out Mass. To Brockton Mass. Shout out to We're Brockton out Mass. There. Okay. Uh, <laughs> as a class of 2010, baby. What's up? Brockton Mass. Yeah, Wait, how do we dude. do the gang? Wait, how do we do that? <laughs> Be- oh, yeah. Brockton Mass all Brockton. day. <laughs> I do. Let, let out the bees. Let out the bees. Okay. So Brockton Mass. Brockton Mass. Okay. Your house. Is in our house. Mm-hmm. So there had only been one previous owner before my parents moved in in the 80s. And there was, uh, they did know that there had been a little girl who lived in the house at some point who got hit by a car and passed away. Oh, and so there was a few different times because... My mom, um, sorry, I'm just eating a red vine, um, <laughs> in the smallest possible chunks possible. I just saw a chunk of red vine come down. I've been like anxiety tearing up this red vine, thinking about ghosts. Okay, it's fine, it's They're, fine. You can switch it up with uh, these uh, Airhead these Extreme are, Bites. And they, these are so Which are good. your favorites? Shout out to I, Alfie for introducing us to these. I kind of these like these ones better, the the yeah. little filled ones. Okay, yeah. They could be filled with almost anything, yeah. though. That's, I guess, the Do you actually part. take those home after? Yeah. You could have them. Really? As a gift, yeah, yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. For, for the fantastic ghost stories. For my uh, for yeah. my amazing roommates mm-hmm. who yeah. I love and get along with. I would love for you to bring those for your roommates. Yeah. And just put I'll them in I'll knock the... on their door and be like, hey, are you, do you want a snack, <laughs> stranger? <Yeah. laughs> like, they're but, so weird. They're basically ghosts, but... so so okay, I, Back to your house. Mm-hmm. Right. So my mom... Uh, ran a daycare for me and like she would just take care of all of the kids all my cousins and i grew up within a mile of each other and so all the parents would go to work during the day Mm -hmm. and then my mom stayed home and took care of every kid and that was just like the deal so there's a bunch of stories when i was little of like i would be at school and the younger ones would still be at home Mm -hmm. but one of them would think that they saw me and would go and be like oh why is jamie out in the yard or like my little brother would think he saw me in the house when i was at school or like at dance class or whatever and my and he would go to my mom and be like why is jamie home she's not supposed to be home and my mom would say jamie's not home she's at school she's in class and so there were all these like 
because there was a little little girl with brown hair who lived Annabelle in that house. Annabelle creation who died. for real. Yeah, dude. Oh shit. Yeah, I never found out. My mom for so some reason. So the girl the ghost had brown hair and was. I think she your looked age. enough like me. Yeah, like especially when I was little. So, so it, had a, it had a physical form then. Basically. Something like, I mean, I never saw it. But it looked like. It, I oh, guess it no, looked enough scary. like me that it was confusing for my little cousins and my what brother. What is about Boston? There's so much history, right? Like the it's just pilgrims old. And, like yeah. there, there's a lot of history, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. A lot Settlers, of the fucked up stuff happening there. And all that stuff, right? Yeah, like didn't every... A lot of the bl- didn't like the witch trials happen around that area? Salem, too? yeah. Salem, Salem witch trials Mass is stuff. that... I mean, all, all See, their that, history that, is so the fucked Blair up. The Blair Witch shit, the original ones... I, Scared the shit out of me. Terrifying. Like, Josh. Terrifying. You remember when he yeah. was looking for Josh? <laughs> and then at the very end when he walks into that abandoned house and he's, he's just like, facing the corner. <laughs> yeah. <It's> Josh. Josh. <laughs> I've never looked at anyone named Josh the same yeah, way again. Yeah, I know. I know. That's terrible. And I guarantee you this, you'll, you'll, you'll probably never date a guy named Josh. Oh, uh. Because of that movie, right? Yeah, they, a real witches, disservice are there was done. In to the, there were no, there were never. Well, actually, yes, Uh-oh. there are witches, but good, yeah. but good ones, not bad ones. Okay, what my, do you mean good ones? Good, I mean like that Wicca? most witches. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like my uncle's very into Wicca. He has a. So just tell the viewer, like, what's the difference between like bad witch, you know, witchcraft and good? Uh, witch well, stuff? I mean, it's more like I feel like there's a lot of it out mm-hmm. here, just like very spiritually crystal with the crystals. Like their stores, those kind of yeah. witches, right? Uh, so my uncle has like a shop like that in Plymouth, Mass. That that's What's the, name the of whole it? deal. Um, oh my gosh, I don't know. I haven't been in like oh, ten okay, years. Okay. What's your uncle's name? His name's uh, Dennis Callahan. Check Shout out, out his shop. Shout out to Dennis Callahan. I'm if so you're watching. sorry, I don't remember holler, the name holler, of your holler, store, holler. Uncle Dennis. So go to Uncle Dennis's. Yo, store. just ch- just Google Uncle Dennis. See what happens. <laughs> there, All right, there's, shout out to Uncle Dennis. I've been to the website before. It's HTML. Yeah. Uncle Dennis, step it up. I can help. Yeah. I should just, cool. I should just like, so this show is all about shout outs even though we don't have an official sponsor we like to, we just like to th- throw things out there to see if just to see if it sticks yeah, yeah see if someone you like takes a bait or yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's we're, you gotta yeah, we're looking for sponsors so airheads holler airheads what's going if on you're, uh, you know, yeah lacroix mm-hmm. or even I'll just throw this out there red vines we'll take your sponsorship I mean the grape ones the, have you had the grape ones yeah they're good they're good yeah. or if any fans have anything they want to yeah, so fans, if you're watching, um, you got just a holler. product. Yeah, got a product, then holler. just holler at us. And just uh, money. You can have money. We don't need a product. Yeah. yeah. Oh, even easier. Yeah. Cut out the are, middle, man. Are you, uh, do you have brothers and sisters? I have one brother. Older or younger? Younger. Where's he at? He's in Boston. Oh, really? They're all in Boston, They're baby. They're all in Boston. They're all there. How do you survive the winters out there? Man, it was, I mean. This I, must be luxury for you. Like the, This is the come on. best. Like, the, I was going to stay in Boston longer mm-hmm. and I was going to push off moving a little bit. But my last winter there was so awful that I was How like. How cold does it get? I mean, it gets below zero. Like it's, it's, <laughs> have you lived here forever? I've, I, when I was a kid, we lived in Minnesota. Oh my God, that's so much worse. Adina, yeah, Adina. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Adina. I know it's the, it's, it's a nice if place. If you need sponsors. Um, yeah, from Adina because it's a rich neighborhood. City of Adina. Ooh, uh, Adina. There so Adina hockey, there's a lot of hockey. You're <gasps> used to ice. I mean, Boston. I know, I know hockey. Boston and Minnesota, yeah. Dude, yeah. It's huge, Minnesota, right? Hockey. Yeah. It's, um, it's like not, a, not as huge as it should be. In Minnesota, though. Oh, dude, massive. they threw me on the ice. You have to. Yeah. My first job was at an ice rink. I, I still have memories of like the outside ice rink and mm-hmm. then like you know what I'm saying the snack shop and it's the I used to work in the yeah, snack shop yeah and in the skate shack which is awful mm-hmm. like where you I worked in the skate shack at my high school why where I mean why was it awful it was awful because you have to take the it's like Friday night it's basically a water hole for high like watering hole for fr- high school freshmen everyone's trying to get kissed right. <laughs> Hockey rink. Yeah, Friday night. Oh shit. Eight PM to ten PM free skate. Yeah, shout out to AZF skating rink in Brockton, Mass. (laughs) Thanks for the paychecks. Yeah. I was able to uh, cool. pay for all my college yeah. application yeah. fees with all the sick cash yeah. I made at AZF. No, you didn't have a crush on any of the, the, the stud um, hockey players. Th- there must have been no. some talented hockey players going through there. No, no, not in Brockton. Brockton was really? big on football. Okay. Uh, so. But hockey was Shout out to Brockton football. Um. Honestly, a legacy. 
And yeah. <laughs> so go back to the high school kids, the watering hole. I like the way you. So it is. I mean, it, it is. Like it's a very like wild environment, and yeah. all. It's like all the because when you're like 14, you're just like too horny to like walk, yeah. and so everyone's just trying to skate around and like get and fingered hold or hands, like right, right, right. So they're trying to skate <laughs> and then just hold hold hands. Everyone's How do you go about that? Shit. I don't know. I never got to do it because I, I was like, <laughs> if you were like, trying to put yourself in a 14 year old boy's mind they're disgusting they're <laughs> like they're they're disgusting why, why are they disgusting they're they're human beings so they're just going right. through a phase right they're i yeah. mean they're just graduating to a different kind of disgusting yeah right? but they're they're just passing through a very yeah. specific phase of is it is disgusting it, is, is it the braces is it the the zits is it like i mean i talk? had those i had those and i had a back brace i was, whew, I, was I, had a, brace, I had braces when i was younger younger Really? Well, yeah, well, my shit's off. Yeah, I had them in... I guess right. I had mine yeah. in middle school. I had a mid, yeah. I had braces, glasses, and a back brace in middle mm-hmm. school. Okay. And that was not... Uh, that was not a very sexy time in my life. Yeah. But then in high school, I worked in the skate shack. So you would be at this skate place... Skate shack. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk about that again. I, I love, had a sweatshirt I love that said yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Shout out to the skate shack. Were you the only... You had some co-workers, right? Were you the only one in there? Or? It was me and like single... Like a few single moms would work there. Like oh, I was the I was the only high school kid working so there. So you just sold snacks or... I sold snacks, but then on during free skate, they would throw me in the across the way to. What's free skate? Just just describe what that is. Free skate is like so it's it's when all the kids can just come and just like skate around to be around other kids, and I think parents are like, oh, this is safe, you know, like it's just kind of a place for horny kids to go and be horny in the same cold room yeah. <laughs> together um and so what i would do is like and i would you know like i had crushes on people at the free skate but i was you did of course it like was you would see a boy and then you would look at his skates like I, oh those are cool bowers i was like oh my god like there was one time where cameron butler who's cameron butler is he a boy uh, a cutie yeah uh, sh- hey cameron butler <laughs> You shouldn't have ignored her. You blew when it she, when she worked at the shack. You fucking blew it. You blew it, Cameron. There was like, this whole. So, he, what did you like about Cameron? What he did play he hockey like Leonardo at a different. Ca- no, no, he looked like garbage. But he really no, he was like, but he was just he went to another school. Yeah, he played hockey. It was just I think I, I like exoticized him. I was like, oh, he's like he doesn't go to my school. He plays hockey. People don't like hockey at this oh. school. Cameron oh, Butler, right, na, 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 na. right, right. But he would come to our free skate. You, okay, so he went to your free skate. Yeah. <laughs> And so he like messaged me on Facebook. It was like, Jamie, do you go to the free skate on Fridays? Yeah. And I was, I was like, yeah. And he was like, oh, we should go together sometime. <laughs> and Cameron, I, you fucked up, man. I, he's, you fucked up, Cameron. He invited me to the free skate. I was yeah. like, and then I did was like. Did you get goosebumps? Like when he asked you, did you get goosebumps? Yes, but then <sighs> immediately followed by panic because I'm like, at some point I have to tell him that I can't skate with him because I have to take his shoes. Like oh. that was like inevitably. Oh, because what you was, worked at inside there. Because I worked, worked, worked there. there. And he was like, are you going to be there? I was like, oh. yeah, I'm going to be there, oh. but. But Part of it is you have to exchange the uh, you take, take their shoes, their disgusting shoes, shoes, and give them disgusting skates. Oh. It's the most rancid room. So, oh, so it's in smelled. all human I history. I mean, describe the smell of of those of you who've never been to a hockey like <laughs> yeah, environment. Yeah, if you've rink, never worked in a very stinky room by yourself, it's, uh, it's just it's horrid. horrible. It's, it's really. Horrid. I mean, and it's just and so many new scents are constantly <laughs> entering and exiting. But, yeah, and it's a lose lose because even if it's just a room full of skates, it still smells terrible. Yeah, you know what? I didn't mean right. to cut you off, but I remember as a kid. Like finding hockey pucks and like it would be like you know you find yeah. a cool one and you'd be like it was like a diamond you'd be like oh. you were just like I found a puck yeah then you put it in your, <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 but that's how it was there too right there's pucks sure. like laying around sure it was yeah. a great place to to work it was just the Friday nights that I would really dread because that was when I I was like embarrassed that like my family like we I had to have a job and I was like embarrassed about that and I'm like oh, it's kind of cool think I'm like now if you think look. back it's a cool I, thought, I think it's now cool now I think to, it's yeah, cool but back then you were but back then I was like they're gonna think I'm poor and, and they're gonna and if anyone ever invites me skating I'm gonna say no but I have to touch your shoes which is what happened with Cameron Butler yeah so the only one only one one date with Cameron no, no dates with Cameron oh. I no well and this is the worst part 
is when I told him I'll be there, but I can't skate with you. He came with a different girl. Fuck you, Cameron. All right. And I so was hey, right dude. There. Fuck you, Cameron. I was right there. I took both of their shoes. All right. It so was so I take upsetting. it back, Cameron. Nah. Karen, you blew it. Damn you, Cameron. You blew. You blew made it. Made eye contact with my little fourteen-year-old eyeballs. I was like, here are my shoes. This is my girlfriend. Yeah. It's like, ah. So was that, like, let's, I like, I like where you're heading toward, like, so like, <laughs> let's, but uh, let's talk about other jobs in Boston, like coming up, like, so Ooh, that was one, that was, how old fun. were you then? 14, 15. So okay, tell me the progression. Okay. You quit that. Okay. And then you went to something else. I worked there through high school. Okay. And then when I, when I got to college, I worked in what a college again, Emerson. Shout out and to. Emerson College, baby. Emerson. Art school kids. Emerson. Yeah. Like it was this? all right there. Okay. I liked it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, so I, when I was there, I worked, I mean, I had so many jobs in college because I, too. yeah, it's like I was just, broke. right, right. I was broke. And it's like, if I didn't have a certain amount, I would have to drop out. So I was like, like, I worked in the library. Yeah. I had to check IDs at, at uh, I went to ASU. Mm-hmm. So I, I had to check IDs at a dorm. Like, right. The, so the imagine scanner. like I'm the dude like behind the computer and like. Checking IDs. I felt like such the biggest loser. Right. What are you laughing at, George? <laughs> I'm still scarred. Yes. I'm still scarred. No, that's like a hard... Socially, that's a hard job to have. Yeah. Because then if people you see you out like, in the wild, they'll yeah, be like, they'll oh, be like, you're that guy. fucking dork that checks IDs. Right. Like, I got in trouble because <sighs> of you once. Like, yeah. one of those things. You feel like a narc. Mm-hmm. But go on back to Emerson. So I had a lot of jobs when I was in Emerson. I... Worked at the school radio station throughout, and oh, that was but like that's cool. You worked at the radio station? Yeah, that was. I majored in radio there. Oh fuck yeah! And so that was great. Yeah, I really enjoyed that job. Uh, I worked as a barista. I was I was at the barista. <laughs> yeah. And what coffee being a tea leaf? Oh, did I was at Out Seattle's here. best coffee? Okay, cool. Inside of a Borders because it was a long time ago. You trumped me on that one, but yeah, keep Dude, going. Not yeah. to brag, but I miss I it. Don't, I mean, it's what oh. are the benefits of a coffee shop? For those of you who don't know, mm-hmm. you get free espresso all fucking day. Yeah, I feel I like I drank. I was so wired my whole shift, dude. It like it, I, I think loved it raised it. the bar for like I need so much caffeine me now too. to feel anything because I think that I just like when I was like. Teenager, early twenties, mm-hmm. I was just like pounding it constantly. It was like a con- it was like a game to you, huh? I'll do a three. Right. I'm, I'm gonna like, three. I'm, like, I'm gonna Expressos. just, I'm just gonna sweat. Like, and I was always the youngest at the place, so they'd mm-hmm. be like, "She's great. Look at this kid. She you're can't even drink really alcohol." Good. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I'm, I'm like, I want to be the uh, prodigy at this Seattle's mm-hmm. best coffee. <laughs> did, let me ask you something. Did uh, Did Cameron come by? No, Cameron was out of my life by then. Oh, okay. You fuck Cameron you, again. Cameron. I don't know. Who, know, who knows what happened to Cameron? We don't know. Okay. Maybe he married that girl. I hope he did. Yeah. I hope they're so fucking happy. But do you still like, they're... remember his face? No, Cameron wasn't was like... blurry now? Cameron wasn't like the bit, my big high school crush, but yeah. that, that like experience of like being asked out and having that be so exciting and then having it blow up in my face in such a specific way where I had to witness him date someone else... Did that, that was break what your heart stuck. when you actually saw it. No, I think it just like kind of pissed me off. Like oh, I pissed you off. I was embarrassed because I felt like uh, I was maybe if maybe if my parents had a little more money, I could date a boy. So I was oh, like, that was your thinking. Pit. You thought that. I was just embarrassed though. Oh man! They like had to. I don't know because most of the kids didn't have to have jobs. Oh, you know. So you're you're hustling back then. I was, hus- yeah, yeah, I was a hustling, hustling child. Yeah. I was a hustling little kid. So how, were you, how long were you at the coffee shop, the coffee spot? Um, until that, until Borders went out of business. So like nine months, Okay, I think. And then every summer in college, I worked at the, the comptroller's office in Massachusetts. I worked for the government. You did? Mm-hmm. How was mm-hmm. that? That was pretty chill. Like... The comptroller's office is a pretty chill place. Shout out to the Massachusetts comptroller's office. Yeah, yeah, give another shout, shout out. out to well, my boss Scott. Yeah, Scott. Dude, Mass. Scott brought me to a Bell and Sebastian show once. He was oh, that's so cool. chill. Yeah. Whoa, that's a cool thing for him to do. Yeah, I was like his free. Free. I was. That his, was probably like a twenty-five, thirty, forty dollar ticket. Something like that. I was like, I, I mean, I was like his paid intern, and so. And it was always like j- I would just work for him, and so mm-hmm, I'd, like mm-hmm. at the end of every summer, he'd be like, "Let's have, let's do. What would a young person want to do?" And sometimes it was a little bit like, 
mm, that's not really what a young person would want to do. But mm. Bell and Sebastian was good. That's cool. That was a yeah, fun one. Yeah. And then years later, I ran into him at Killer Mike. Con- I was like, Scott's fucking cool. He's Killer just a Mike cool the rapper? Guy. Yeah. From um, Run the Jewels? Yeah. Killer Mike? And my boss from the comptroller's office was there. Oh, that's cool. Dude. He did his research. People huh? throw down at the comptroller's oh, office. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was cool. I got that job because my aunt worked you know, there. No, you can never judge a person by looking at like if they like are into cool music. But someday it's it could weird. be the dorkiest guy into the coolest shit. Exactly. And you those, know what I'm saying? I love those people. That's the bit like, yeah. he looks like a father of twins because he is a father of twins, but he does not look like a Killer Mike fan. But both are true. He probably loves, he it probably like the cool both. Killer Mike ones. Hey, shout out to Killer t- Mike out there in yeah. uh, Run yeah. the Jewels. <laughs> we love Run the Jewels if you just like, Yeah, like if you yeah. just want to throw a couple bucks to the show. <laughs> Killer yeah. Mike. So if you that. guys, yeah, if you happen to have some uh, extra money laying around, <laughs> you want to throw it over to the studio. Stevie Weeby's <laughs> way, then uh, go ahead, uh, hit us up. Um, so did you um, go to a lot of concerts growing up in, in Boston? Yeah, yeah, especially when I was working at the radio station. I, w- I would go to concerts all the time because I didn't top have to five. pay for it. Right now, top five oh, concerts. Yeah, boy. go ahead, top five. In college, mm-hmm. I would say that there was a, uh, the Hives show that I went to that was like amazing wow. and one of my favorite shows ever. Cool. There were a lot of local Boston bands that I was really into. There's this band. Yeah, name a few. Krill, shout out to Krill. Shout out to Krill with a K. No, like with a K. K R I L L. Yeah, like the, like the little fishy. Krill, Krill That's ruled. a cool name. Krill's, a, uh, yeah, they're no That's longer a band. cool name. It was, they're great. What was their logo? Just like a fish face. They had a bunch of different stuff. Sometimes it'd be an apple core. Sometimes it would be a an actual like krill. illustrated krill, a little fishy with all the legs. And It'd be cool if it was like the swamp thing. That would be tight. They like had a lot of different stuff. with the swamp thing. Yeah. With cool font like graffiti or something crazy. We should pitch it to them five years ago. You know what? They don't exist anymore. Uh, oh, Dude, they don't exist anymore. No, when I first moved out here, I found out like two weeks after I moved here. And when I moved oh, here, yeah. I didn't have any friends. And I was just like, uh, like vibrating all the time of just like, I've made a mistake. Uh-huh. Uh, so then two weeks after I moved here, all my friends in Boston were like, Krill broke up and they're doing two more shows. And I was like, oh my God, if I don't go to those shows, I'm going to die. What kind of music die. was it? Um, it was kind of like garage rocky oh, kind of music. Cool. How many band member members? Uh, there were at one four? point there was four, but then there was mostly three. Okay. Um, and it was just it was they're so good. So I instead of going home for Christmas my first year here, I flew back and went to the Krill so, shows. Yeah, yeah. So you love Krill. I love so Krill. Krill. Check out Krill. Check out Krill. Okay, everything's good. Concert number two. Oh well, the the first one was the Hives, then Krill. Oh, oh yeah, Hives Krill. Mm-hmm. Three. Uh, Pile. That's another Boston Pile. band I really liked. Dude, They're still cool together. Names. Great name. Pile. Pile. Just one word. Yeah. One syllable. Krill. Mm-hmm. Pile. Pile. Keep it simple. Yes. Yeah, simple. Keep it concise. Pile. It was. Mm-hmm. And then what? What kind of? What kind of stuff did they do? It's very similar to Krill to the point where Krill had an an uh, EP about how much they liked Pile. Oh, so they admired each other's work. They loved each other. Oh. It was such a supportive, great community. It was like back when uh, like Modest Mouse was there together, and then like Built to Spill, kind of like they like exactly. Give, you know what I mean? It's they they like, respected them, they right. each other's work and stuff, mm-hmm. and they're kind of around. You know, Pile the same would area. be like the big brother to Krill. Sort of. And okay. so Krill would write about how much they like Pyle, and Pyle would be yeah. like, you guys can open for us. Oh, that's That was so kind cool. of the vibe. Yeah. It was cool. And how did they have like a loyal fan base? Uh, they did. Yeah, yeah. There was they like did, a right? big... I wrote for, uh, right after I graduated college, mm-hmm. there's the the like alt music publication in Boston. It's called Alston Pudding. Mm-hmm. And I wrote there for a while. And they like, that publication was basically just like, hey, do you like Krill? We're only going to write about Krill. So if you live in this two block radius and really like Krill, this is your website. And it was oh, like wow. the, the greatest. So the greatest. Um, what year were they together? Like when was this? This would have been, pro- I think from like maybe 2011 to 2015. It was oh, a brief. So it was kind of recently. Yeah, yeah. They broke up oh. in 2015. Wow. Uh, and that was just like, so I skipped Christmas and saw Krill. There's some good. I don't, uh, don't regret the Pixies it. are from Massachusetts. Yes, they are. They did. Because that's one of my favorite. I love the Pixies. I saw. I got to see them. Oh, me too. I in loved Boston. it. I loved it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. your favorite Pixies song? 
Oh, man. I don't have a cool enough answer to that question. Too many to choose from. Let's, Let's go back to I, Krill and Pile. Yeah, yeah Krill okay, and Pile. Okay, so that's, okay, the Hives, Krill, and Pile. You uh-huh. have two more. Okay. Yeah. This is, must be fun for you. It kind of gets the brain waves working. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's like I need back to go the, back to all these old the playlists I had. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I, uh, I saw uh, there, there's an artist called Lady Lamb the Beekeeper. Who I was very, very, very say into. Say that name again. Uh, Lady Lamb, the beekeeper. It's yeah. since been shortened to just Lady Lamb now. Lady Lamb. Mm-hmm. That's she's fucking cool too. She's so fucking. It's a cool. she. Yes. Uh, that's like just her artist name, and then she, with I like just whoever she's Lady Lamb. Lady. Yeah, lamb. just like the uh, the krill. Beekeep, krill pile. I, I'm writing this shit down. I have so many friends that have yeah. pile tattoos. I feel like I'm the only one who doesn't have a pile tattoo. Is it? Just a pee? No, there's as people will usually choose like an image from their album. They're like I think a 2012 album. Yeah, of theirs. Have you heard um, of any of these groups, George? Ilani? It's totally fine. It's very much. But that's if why the show is five here, so you could give them Spread some the light. Word. Yeah, so you could give these guys some Please light. Please listen to Krill. They're. they're you so know bad. why I like Krill because there's this movie back in the day called Krill. Really? I never heard of that. Crawl. Have you heard of that? <laughs> it's a science fiction movie. Crawl. 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 Into it. Yeah, you should look it up. I will. Yeah. It's similar enough to Crow. I have to. Yeah. That'd be a cool title for an album. Krill vs. Crawl. Krill vs. Crawl. <laughs> <laughs> right? Krill vs. Crawl. Because mm-hmm. there's a weapon. It's a science fiction movie where it was a weapon that they threw. It was like, a, and it chopped heads off, but it was like a boomerang and it came back to you. Oh, hey, babe, cool. can you type in Krull? K-R-U-L-L. Have you seen oh, this movie? No. It's so really it's science, just... I think it's an 80s science fiction movie. I like it. Krull. Krull. You looking that up? Krull. 1983. 1983. Krull. Mm-hmm. What's it about? Liam Neeson's in it. Wow. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to watch it, Krull? Yeah, I mean, Liam Neeson, I'm salt. You're gonna watch it. Yeah, I'll watch it. You'll watch Krill. I'll watch it. I'll Because you talked you about Krill. That's a cool poster. Whoa. Look at that shit. Wait, wait, wait. Look at that. Nice. Oh my god. Wow, Liam Hop. isn't looking Look sexy at that. in this movie. Krill. There's a scantily clad Can woman I show and the... a yeah. monster. So, for those of you who don't know <laughs> and haven't seen Krill, mm. I don't know why it popped in my head. I was like, shout out to all the curl heads out there who yeah, have so seen Yeah, so shout curl. out, if you even have a curl tattoo, see that, Dude, that would see be the weapon, cool tattoo. Yeah, like, like the, the monster. <laughs> yeah. So, man, do, if you have like a, a curl Henson tattoo, puppet. just uh, tag the Stevie Weeby show. Stevie Weeby show. There's someone curl. out there who does. Who the, has it, the monster like that? It looks like a Jim Henson puppet, doesn't oh. it? Mm-hmm. You know, Jim Henson's right down the street. I, I, whenever I it's pass right her, I'm like, there. Oh my God. Crawl. Learn about it. Crawl. Right. Learn it. You, Love it. Crawl. Okay. Crawl. So you did all, did you, oh, so, so lady, okay, so oh. lady lamb, krill, pile, uh, oh, the, the, the hive. Are oh, you missing one. one more? Yeah. I got something cool. Um, yeah. Who do I really like in college? It's fun, right? This is not, do you even feel like you're getting interviewed right now? This is just like No, fun I feel like shit, I'm just right? like shooting, shooting the, the shit. shit, right? Walking yeah, down I haven't memory thought lane. about this stuff in so long. Yeah. But this is good. It gets, it gets things going, you know? It's good. You know, four you is can, fine. There's four is four yeah, good? Yeah, four is good. All right. Yeah, cool. yeah. I don't I mean it's I thought the yeah. fifth one would be Laura Marling, but I don't have much to say about it other than I really like her. Oh, okay. Cool, yeah. cool. So when did you get into hey, speaking of music, mm-hmm. you play the oboe clarinet. Oboe. Oboe. So let's don't get talk it twisted. Because I, <laughs> I looked so I did a little research on you. Oh, cool. How long have you been playing the oboe clarinet? I've been playing. Whew, triggered. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. The oboe. The oboe. Yeah. How long have you been playing the oboe? I've been playing the oboe since fourth grade. Wow. Mm-hmm. And then that was your choice of instrument. It was not. Your, oh, your mom. It was my mom, and there's. A, I feel like, but but no one has ever been like, oh, you look like a flute, like because I wanted to be a flute girl, you know, because mm-hmm. like flute girls are like, you know, hot and self assured, and that's very much the vibe of a flute girl. And then like clarinet girls are kind of like normal. There's nothing like, but oboe girls are like freak. What a freak! Why? 
I don't know, but it is true across the board. My that- brother played the flute. <laughs> really? <laughs> Wait, a flute boy is really cool in, too, in, though. In, in fifth grade. Because they're like... Do, you, do people know that? No. Oh, that's oh, a new one. <laughs> Wait, really? And when I get back to Gilbert, Arizona, I can look through Hell the... Hell yeah. The, I, can, I can find the proof. I have pictures. You have it? I think I have pictures of him. Yeah, I have pictures of him. No <laughs> saxophone. <laughs> You were mm-hmm. that's cool. Okay. Right. My my first boyfriend ever played the Barry sax oh, and I cool, was cool. obsessed with him. Mm-hmm. Not because of the Barry I mean, I guess sort of because of the mm-hmm. Barry sax. He called me he called me on my sixteenth birthday and played happy birthday on the bass clarinet. I was like, I'm in love. Oh, this is my. what love feels that like. That <laughs> is really a cool thing to do. I honestly so was to to- I was totally taken off guard. I was like, it's wow, love is real and happening to me right now. Was that was one of the amazing. most romantic things a uh, uh, boy's ever done it's still, towards you? It's still one of the most romantic Number things one. a boy. Yeah, I think like that really is the bar. George, of- step it up, man. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> if you're ever like, just the fact... <laughs> Playing a girl, happy birthday on the bass clarinet. I know. You're not going to beat it. You You're can't beat that. You're not going to beat it. No. You can't beat it. No. All right. I, not in my, not in the 10 years since it happened. Yeah. So. So do you have some good memories with the oboe and like. Yeah. I, you go, I, do you do it in high school? Like marching, I did. marching band? No, because oboes don't march. So oh, that damn, was. That sucks. It's the double read. It gets too dry. Yeah. Shout out to my oboe heads. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. talking about. You're Do not. Do you want to shout out any of the old your old bandmates or? Hell yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want it <laughs> to all your oboe heads. All right. All right. Uh, here we go. Go down the line. Go down the line. <laughs> First of all, if I'm if I'm giving a shout out to everyone who's been involved in my oboe life, yeah. you gotta give a shout out to Mr. Knox. He was my pri- <laughs> He was my <laughs> private Mr. lesson. Mr. Knox. <laughs> I had a lesson with Mr. Knox for a, a half hour Knox. every week for like from fi- uh, from fifth grade to twelfth grade. Right. Uh, we were always in a very small room together. Mr. Knox was a nervous, sweaty guy. He yeah. was cool. Well, we, love the sweaty. To, we love the sweaties. We love the sweaties. We love it. He's he's an oboe weirdo. Mm-hmm. Like he was great. He was just like, um, oh, hi. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he oboe t- he was, time. Oh. He was a nervous guy. <laughs> he was a nervous guy. <laughs> Talk like that. He was. He would go oboe time. He was kind of. Oh. That was maybe that was a mean impression. I know he's watching. Yeah. No, he's okay. not. But he was just always like, you know, wouldn't make eye contact with you. He'd be like, um, so did oh, he, didn't, he like look. Did at the you ground? practice the minuet in G or like whatever? Oh, wow. He'd be like, I got a book of duets for us, and you're oh. just like, okay, I'm twelve. You know, Mr. So, Knox. So, he was Mr. Married. Knox, if you end up viewing this, reach out Dude, to us and say hi. To I would your honestly, I would love to catch up with Mr. Yeah. Knox, and I'm sure he's like do, still playing and so doing this in high really school? well. Uh, this Mr. Knox, I had th- throughout my life. Oh, throughout your life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then in high school, my high school band instructor was. What if the person living with you is really Mr. Knox? Mr. Knox. Would that be Would that be kind of creepy? No, I would if he love knocks to on live your, with Mr. Knox. Knox. He's <laughs> a really cool if he, guy. If he, if he walks down the basement, he goes, I've been Mr. Knox the whole time. And I'd be like, dude, my oboe's in my closet. Why didn't you tell me? We could have been playing duets this whole fucking right, time. Right, Okay, so there, Knock, uh, Mr. Knox, Mr. Knox won. Who's, who, who are some others? Uh, well, there was Mr. Macrina, who was my high school band instructor, who is like, a legend among high school band instructors. Mr. Macrina? Mr. Macrina. Okay. He's a, an old Italian guy. Hell yeah. Who is uh, very intense. In and what ways? Would, uh, just, just would be really, like, he would make everyone cry at some point. I specifically remember. Did he remember, cry? Oh, yeah. How, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Because you're not playing the instrument. Because I wasn't playing. Right. He was like, he was like, how much have you been practicing this solo? Because I, I got a solo in my senior year. And it was right before the Christmas concert. We were playing the Mariah Carey Christmas medley. Ooh. Big band. 110 kids in this school band. Damn. And this was like my, like moment and he and we were rehearsing the day of and I fucked it up and he like stopped everything a hundred kids and he was just like Jamie how much have you been practicing and I was just like oh what you know and he was like uh yeah could I have a number for a lot whoa and I know and I was like no calling you out (laughs) on your practicing yeah and he's totally right I wasn't practicing yeah I'm busy. I'm 17. Yeah, I'm doing yeah. teenager stuff. But he was he was intense and made a lot of made a lot of kids cry. Uh, but it got results. Okay. Yeah. Respect. One more uh, 
band or a instructor. Instructor only? Or, oh no, no, you could do or some like band an mates. Friend. You could do some bandmates. <laughs> uh Bethany Bersani. Bethany Bersani. Yeah, dude. She was first chair when I was third chair and I and she was like she just had Wow, she, she had was touch. She was so good at the oboe. Oh, she also was like in all AP classes. She was super smart. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure like like d- did recreational drinking and smoking weed and stuff and stuff like that, but also had a part-time job. I was like, she has it all. Like, And she could still function at that level? At, at that, that was, I was like, she's a fucking superhero. Cause I like, I wish someone would invite me to a party mm-hmm. and I practice oboe all the time and she's still way better than, like she was just, she's Do you think great. she still smokes? I mean, I don't know. Oh, okay. It's a I long think, time ago. It was. It might have just been her crazy younger years. Yeah. But she was. Did you like, experiment cool. with that, all, any of that stuff growing up? No, I was like a very boring kid. The first time I saw, I first time I saw weed, I burst into tears. <laughs> I was very not chill. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I was Why? very not chill. You I don't were, know. Wait, because you because you got paranoid? Or? No, I didn't smoke it. I just oh, saw it. It made <laughs> just you cry. Like, no. <laughs> Oh my it god! Really, it was really like so. You were like principled child, straight, like completely walked a straight line. Totally until until I didn't try alcohol until college. Yeah, what? I didn't do anything. Really? I didn't do, yeah, I was a real type A doofus nerd. And you know, I could I take it you don't even do that now. I mean, like I I okay, drink like, and like recreationally moon. will yeah. like do it. I like a good Mike's Hard Lemonade. Shout out to all my uh, Hard Lemonade Mike's people out there. Lemonade, yeah. Uh, but but yeah, in in high school, my saxophone boyfriend like had gone off to college and had come back, and so was he yeah. like the cool guy coming back? He well, he wasn't the cool guy in high school, but then when he came to college and then came back literally three weeks later, he was like, "I smoke weed now. I'm cool." Blah blah. blah. And oh wow, it's like an '80s movie. Yeah, like he yeah, left for yeah. two seconds, and then he comes back as he cool was guy. also majoring in the saxophone, so he was doing the same thing just in Connecticut and not in Massachusetts. Yeah. And so he came back and he was like, "Yeah, me and my friend Mike are gonna smoke." Like he didn't say they were gonna smoke weed, so I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. But because so, I was still in high school, and I was like, "Oh, and everyone's cool now, and yeah, I still yeah, suck." Yeah. And uh, they, we went to this guy Mike's house, and there was weed, and there was on the, like, on the coffee table. Mm-hmm. And then you cried. I held it together for a while, and then did it peer pressure you? That's why you cried. They, no, I think everyone like knew there was. They were like, "Jamie, there's no way she would accept it because she sucks." Like they're like, "She's they not." They said cool. that about you. No, no, uh, no. I think I'm projecting. But oh, uh, you're okay. But they didn't ask me because they knew I would say no. Right. 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 It was like they knew I'd say mm-hmm, no. But then we mm-hmm. all got in the car and they were smoking weed in the car. And I remember we turned on to High Street and I was like, "No, like oh, this is no. a betrayal of everything I know." And yeah. I so I was just like quiet crying and then my saxophone boyfriend was like oh no like we should probably how, take how her do, home how do you take it he was very nice about it yeah. he made he made sure they dropped me off and then he brought because i i told my mom he brought you he brought me home okay told my mom and then brought uh, this is like a very new england apology well, yeah, go ahead go contacted ahead. my mom uh, like I think emailed her and was like, "Hi, I'm sorry that Jamie was around weed. Can I bring you to Dunkin' Donuts and get you coffee to apologize?" <laughs> Whoa, that's, and they that's did. a cool gesture. It was very nice. Dunkin' yeah. Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts. That's not. That's no small Shout deal. Shout out to Dunkin'. Shout out to Donuts, Donuts out baby. there. We love it. Okay, it's, so their you, coffee's good. Their coffee's great. Right. I love Especially it. Especially on the East Coast, right? Yeah. No, I don't. I'm not detecting a Boston accent from your speech. Why is I, that? I I have spent have you, a lot of my life actively suppressing it because my because really? my mom has one really bad. Like, go ahead to imitate your mom. Really bad. Like, uh, what, give me something say, to say. Just say, um, Jamie, your breakfast is ready. Get your ass down here. I uh, okay. Fuck. Uh, she'd be like, Jamie, your breakfast is ready. Get the fuck down here. You know, it's like the... Oh, like it's the, the tone. It's a little newsies. It's a little... That wasn't very good. Yeah, but um, say, um, I, I, I only started doing Boston... Like, figuring out a Boston accent when I started doing cartoons with Boston accents. Yeah, 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 yeah. But my mom has a really thick accent. Like, thick. very Pak the Ka Havid Yad. Oh, bit. yeah. Because mm-hmm. I love Goodwill Hunting. 
Those those are and, uh, middling Boston accents. Oh, so They're what's okay. the difference? It's because that's a great movie. It's a great movie. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like just hard to get the accent right. I don't. I can't explain why but there's no movie i've seen has like gotten it just right the departed's pretty good the, the departed the departed yeah the Depa- no no give, the give us an example like what do they enunciate mostly do they like stretch out their a's just or? A, it's a mostly a disregard for ours just like a disregard yeah a disregard for us ah uh, yeah oh. go see the fucking departed oh yeah I kind of, I it's kind of bouncy. Cool. No, it's I, I, great. I love that. I love it. It's great. I just, my mom had the thickest one out of oh, everyone. Really? Like it was bad for Boston. And so, and then my dad is a, is a sports writer. And whenever he would travel, would never want anyone to know where he was from. Why because, is that? Is there, why I, is there a shame no, attached to it? it I wasn't, think it's cool. It wasn't shame for him. The way he explained it to me was he didn't want people to know where he was from because they didn't want him to be like, oh, that guy must work for this team. Oh. So it was like What's more a of Southie a professional. Mean? Like a Southie? Southie. Yeah. What does Southie mean? Yeah. Southie's like an area. Oh, because I got yeah. that from Goodwill Hunting too. Yeah, yeah, fucking Southie trash. Yeah. That shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Southie's like a neighborhood so that's in Boston. Rough. That's like more rougher. Not even as or, much anymore, but it was associated in the... I, I got in trouble once for talking shit about Southie. Um, oh, you're talking shit about a Southie? About about Southie. Oh, Because okay. uh, I, I went to a, a, a bar in Southie on St. Patrick's Day, which is just like, don't do that. What? Because uh, it's fucking rough, huh? It's just fu- it's just fucking la- like, loud. You know, yeah. Wait, yeah. mostly Irish? Um, yeah, but like it's it's actually more diverse than you would think now. Okay, yeah, yeah. But yeah. traditionally, yeah, it's all Irish pubs yeah, 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 and it's yeah. just loud. Everyone's drunk. Mm-hmm. It's in, you know, and I was at that time I was working at the Boston Globe. Mm. Uh, I was like just writing a piece. You're working for the Boston Globe? Yeah. Oh, you never mentioned that. I well, there's a, there's a job I had in Boston. I worked That's for the Globe. Job. Yeah, yeah. You worked at the Globe. It was great. Okay. Yeah, a Boston institution. Yes. Uh, so I, I was was working there when I was uh, 22. Uh, they they just sort of it was a weird story of how I ended up getting there, but I was working there, and I wrote mostly for their website, yep. uh, Boston.com. And then I would write like just really fluffy human interest stuff. And so they're like, yeah, go to Southie on St. Patrick's Day, right? About what you see. So I, I did that. And I you wrote. You by yourself? I went by myself. Shit. But I had a friend who worked at one of the bars. So I'm like, oh, I'll just go to my friend Max mm-hmm, bar mm-hmm. And, and hang out there. And it was fine. Just It was just loud. And I wrote a very mild piece about it that said like, you know, like every day is a drunk day in Southie, but St. Patrick's Day is the drunkest day of all. And this is what you wrote in your column? Yeah, that's like pretty close to what the wording of okay, it was. Okay. And then I got all these emails from my editors after it was published cuz they did edit it and publish it that way and then like a US representative from Massachusetts, Stephen Lynch, my fucking energy and my en- enemy uh, Stephen no Lynch. shout out to Stephen Lynch. Oh, yeah. Stephen Lynch. Uh, Eat my Ste- ass, Stephen Lynch. Lynch. If you're walking, watching this, U.S. rap. If you're even still in Turn office, off YouTube, man. you chode. He's yeah. oh god, Stephen Lynch. Yeah. So Stephen Lynch released a statement condemning my Is piece. Is he a chode? I, I think he's a chode. Okay, Stephen I mean, Lynch. Hundred percent, he's a chode. The chode. If you're watching this, <laughs> turn off YouTube. <laughs> but Delete a chode everything. is. I just learned what it is. It's uh, you're a uh, un. Say it, man. Say it. It's like uncircumcised. Yeah, it's just a little. It's like, what's going on here? I don't even know. I don't even have the specific. I just. To me, it's it's just a little, a little, a little knob. Oh, so it's like a micro. Uh, Like a a knobby little. Yeah. It's like a micro penis. That's how I think of chode. But I feel like chode's open to interpretation. Okay, so it's like a little bit. It's just a little like. Yeah, you do this, and then it's like. Okay. You're just like ah. All right, too much chode. Yeah, he's a chode. That's Stephen. <laughs> okay. We just described his representative, right, right, U.S. Stephen. representative Stephen right. Lynch. So he released a statement, and then the Herald wrote a piece about how Stephen Lynch said my piece sucked, and it was this whole fucking dumb Boston media oh, uh, feedback loop. All right. So- sorry, Stephen Lynch. Stephen Lynch, Can please don't watch my this. Ass. Yeah. How are we doing on time? This has been fun. We're almost an hour. We're almost an hour. Wow, I wouldn't have guessed time, that. Did time fly by? Time truly flew by. Now, okay, so 
God, we didn't even get back. Hold oh on. yeah, what Let's else is talk on your about, list? <laughs> I didn't even look at the list because we got kind of caught up. Um, yeah, this is a good. Do time you want to talk about yours? How'd you get the idea for the Zamboni Crime Division? Go. Mm. Let's talk about your animation because you animate too. Mm-hmm. You do comedy, but then you animate. Yeah, I did. So, so how'd you come up with the idea and where could they watch this stuff? So, uh, Boston PD Zamboni Crimes Division mm-hmm. is uh, sort of just the combination of everything that I know about and oh, like. Okay. So it's my dad is a hockey reporter, cool. um, and I worked at the skating rink forever. So it was around Zambonis a lot. Ask him if he knows who Dino Cicerelli is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, ask who's him. that? He's uh, he was a uh, he was um he was like a legend in Minnesota. He played for the Minnesota Minnesota North Stars. Oh no shit! Before they yeah, were the Wilds. Yeah, oh, yeah, like back in the day. Yeah, dude, so that's so cool. So ask your dad if he knows who Dino Cicerelli is. He probably does. Yeah, he probably does. Yeah, dude, that's the cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so um, I wanted to see if I could do a convincing enough Boston accent, mm-hmm. and so I was working for this company cafe, mm-hmm. and I. Pitch them. I was only supposed to do one, but then people liked the the cops that I did, and so I ended up doing uh, thirteen episodes of it. Cool. Yeah. And where could they? You where, can you can find them on my, my YouTube channel. Is probably the easiest place to find them. How do they find your YouTube channel? Oh, I don't even know. I yeah, just uh, it's Jimmy Loftus, right? Yeah, yeah. How do you it's spell Loftus? L O F T U S. Okay. Yeah. You have a website too, right? I sure do. Lo- what's it's, your website? Uh, Jamie Loftus is innocent dot com. Okay, and then you have an Instagram too, right? I have an Instagram. What? What's your Instagram? My Instagram is Jamie Christ Superstar. Okay, okay, say it again. Say it again. Jamie Christ Superstar, like Jesus Christ Superstar. Okay. A really fun early Andrew Lloyd Webber piece. Hell yes. Um, can you talk about shows coming up for your stand up? Uh, yeah, I got show. Oh, uh, I'll, I'll be at uh, Hot Tub with Kurt and Kristen next mm-hmm. Monday at the Virgil. I'll also be at the Hard Times uh, live show at Nerd Melt next Monday. Right uh, down the street. It's right down the street. Yeah. So Meltdown, uh, Meltdown Comics. It's that's where I record my podcast every week. Meltdown Comics. Yeah, and cool. you should listen to that too. It's plug called, that again. Plug it. Plug that. Uh, the the uh, I have a podcast called the Bechdel Cast that comes out every week. It's about the role of women in movies. Nice. It's fun. That's yeah. Dope. You guys should listen. It's really fun. We Can we uh, attend one of these sessions or your, your uh, podcast or at least watch? We're doing yeah. Uh, we, Is it a live crowd or not usually? Oh, okay. But we're doing a, a well. We're doing a live show in November. Okay. At Meltdown down we, the can, street. Are we invited or can we go? Of course. We can come 100%. check it out. You'll be on the list. We're gonna be on the list. So yeah. us three. Yeah. We're invited. Yeah, of course. Okay, thank yeah. you. <laughs> okay, so, okay, I'm going to actually, so a couple last yeah. things. I needed yeah, sure. to give um, a shout out. You, you did all, you got everything out, right? I want to make sure you got everything out. Mm. Everything you're on is out, right? The, what did we do? We did the website, the yeah. Instagram, the... Um, and fine. now it's my t- time to, sh- we have three new Patreons for the Stevie Weeby. Uh, shout out to Cookie. Shout out to Simon Bird. Shout out to Travis Kearney uh, and uh, Bloom Mechanic for editing all the vlogs, right? Check. Follow him on Instagram. Follow him on Instagram. Shout out to West Covina, Active Ride Shop, Gavin and Katrina because they got us the advocacy, okay? Because I love skateboarding still, even though I haven't filmed footage. Okay. So this is a people send stuff to the PO box. I want you to open this. I'm gonna try to guess what it is. Ooh, okay. Okay. So shout out to Dario Avalo. Avalos. What's up, Dario? Okay. okay. So I can know. You can't know. Yeah. So I don't. I don't know. So is it a poster? Nah. Uh, no. Is it a uh, comic books? No. Is it a hat? No. Okay. What is it? It's shirts. Oh, and it's I'm a lot. I'm pretty sure it's a bunch. And it's a lot of shirts. It's a whole. <laughs> thing. Okay. It's a lot of shirts. There's okay. Green shirts, blue shirts, pink shirts. Oh my gosh! Shirts Thank of you. All, yeah. So What's let's up, take a look Dario? at one of them. Okay. Okay. Here. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Yeah, the design's really cool. The design's really well. There's a bunch of them. There's. It? It's a. It's a guy with I like the, the red one. Um, a boombox and drumsticks. Look. Ta-da. Cool. It's cool. Yeah, cool. Thank you, man. What's his name? 
Dario. Dario. Thank you, buddy. Dario, you rule. So there's a bunch of them if you want one. It's enough for a whole year. Yeah, this and in literally every possible color. <laughs> Okay. Was there a note or anything? Or just, yeah. the, just the shirts? Um, yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, oh there is. Wait, you read it, but wow. in a Boston, Can you read it in a Boston, a Boston bo- accent? In a Boston accent. Thank you. Yes. Okay, I'll take this off there. 100%. Oh, wait. This might not even be a letter. Oh, there's more. No, it's... Wait, hold on. There's, hold on. There's a letter here. Oh, okay, cool. There's a letter here. Wait, oh, this photos. is all photos. 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 Grab photos. the mic, Steve. Grab the mic. This is all photos. Oh, shit. It's from the... Here's Kid Koala. It's from the... Uh, it's from the Monchi Show. Cause I, I I was in a band, and we went to Boston. You went to Boston? Yeah. Where'd see you the, play? See, that's me and my. <laughs> <laughs> so you can show that's that to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and that's me. That's my ass. Oh, okay. So yeah. So I show you can show my ass. <laughs> Thank you, Dario, for okay. taking uh, pictures no. of my ass. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hope he has pictures of me doing. Okay, there's me with the mic. When in were Boston. these? When are these pictures from? Oh, we did a show in Boston. That's so Yeah, I wore a jock strap on stage. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. This is great. Yeah, great colors. Yeah, and there's me doing my thing. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, wait. So, yeah, he's talking about Boston in the letter. Yeah. This See, is that's crazy. See, that's me. I, I did a little Ray there, the cowboy hat oh with the jock strap. So, man, you obviously went to our show. I mean, he right? talked. Yeah. yeah. So, go ahead. Read, in the, read the letter. Okay. Thank you, Dario. Says- Hi, Stevie Weeby. Here's some shirts I made and gave away on our DVD ASA. You, Dave, Man, G, the DVD ASA crew, and Tiger Belly fam have been held a special place in my heart over the years. It's awesome to see you guys working in the studio again. I really hope I get to see you perform a third time. Maybe somewhere in Texas? Caught you in Boston, but did not take any photos. I was too busy trying to survive the chaos you guys bring. But my girlfriend whipped out the selfie stick in Santa Fe. Here's some pics that I thought you'd enjoy. Nothing like it. actually getting to flip through photos. That show meant so much to me. As an old, salty, disabled veteran, I tend to loathe Veterans Day. That show at Meow Wolf is something I'll never forget. Thank you for all you do. Don't know how to end this, but I don't want to keep rambling. And then he writes his Instagram is Junk the Dragon. Or www.dharioavalos.com. Thank you, Dario. We love you, man. Thank you so much. P.S. There's a photo of my girlfriend, Teresa, getting laughed at for her selfie stick. We love the it. End. Wow, look at all this gear. Dario rules. Uh, Dario man. rules. We love Dario. And we We're have big one. Dario heads. Oh, we wait, have another. And yeah. you have to. <laughs> but but we still have, you still have to do the accent. So you're still doing the Boston thing. If still? The, okay. Yeah. If there's a letter in there, I love right. it. It doesn't say who it's okay, from. Okay, let me, uh, sorry. Yeah. It doesn't say, yeah, this one I'm kind of scared of because there's no return address. That's why she's opening it. Yeah. Yeah, just in case it's harmful. I'm extremely strong. I cannot die, so there's really nothing to worry about. Okay. Okay. Let's see what's Uh-oh. going on here. Uh-oh. Ooh, oh, yeah, wait, guess what it is. Uh, it's a poster. I already saw uh, <laughs> I forgot. It's a poster. Yeah, I cheated. Oh. Ooh. Whoa. Cool. It's cool posters, different, it's like graffiti style. This is, all it says is Instagram at bobby.sleeps. And then also, Bobby Sleeps is email, you. but I don't think he would want so us to give it away. So uh, okay, so. It doesn't say anything. It doesn't say anything. Bobby oh. at, so thank you, Bobby Endless, for this cool, these Bobby cool Endless, p- posters. You're the best. Yeah, I wish there was a letter I wanted to keep doing I the I know, bossing. that was such a fun. So did you have fun? I had a great time. And we could all attend the, uh, your uh, live podcast? Yeah, come when see is the that Bechtelcast. Again? That'll be, I believe, at the end of November at Meltdown. At Meltdown, at Meltdown. Comics <laughs> down the street. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, you should you should come. And then your next show is? Uh, I've got two shows next Monday. If you're in Los Angeles, you should come to them. Okay, where are they at? Either at the Virgil uh, for Hot Tub mm-hmm. or at Meltdown down the street for the Hard Times Live. Hell yeah. Thanks for coming, Jamie. Thanks for having me, man. All right, with right, that. One question. Uh, what, what page are you on in Infinite Jest? Oh, uh, 314. Of? Of uh, 100, a thousand. Oh. No, it's ba- it, It's like okay. a thousand eighty. It's going to take a couple of years. Okay. Just check it. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the progress whoa, update. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. That came out of nowhere. I was curious, oh, okay, I was okay. Asked. He's doing his research too, isn't he? 
You're doing some research. Hell With that yeah. being said, <laughs> now it's time for Little Ray's World, man. Wow. <laughs> World show. All I gotta say is kids' minds must grow. I got abducted by some aliens dropped in snow. Whoa. Stuck into a world I do not know. So join me in adventures now. And I promise not to have a cow. My name is Little Ray. Hey, hey. My name is Little Ray. Hey, hey, hey. So welcome to my world. To all the boys and girls. Welcome to Little Ray's world. Hee-haw! Well, 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 what do we got here, beep? Looks like a god dang chicken egg. Are you an egg man? Bok, 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 bok. Oh, yeah? You're, what's your name, man? Bok, bok. Your name is Greg, correct? Bok. So, how the hell did you end up a god dang egg man, a chicken egg man? Bok, 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 bok. So you were not happy living in your own skin and you decided to torture innocent chickens. Is that correct? How the hell could you live that way, man? And you all you did was drink Pap's Blue Ribbon in your room, correct? Well, how the hell did you die then, man? You got depressed, you climbed at the top of your goddamn barn, and you fell off and cracked your head and died. Now you're egg, correct? Bonk, bonk, bonk. Well, I wrote a little song about you. It goes like this, Greg the Chicken Egg. Greg the Chicken Egg, man. Greg the chicken egg is picking his legs, so stick in the shade. He used to torture chickens, man, a living victim of rage. He fell in love with Meg while drinking, lived and looked in a braids. And used to sharpen blades and hand house down, he picked it this way. He made his way to cage while drinking the plate, so freaking afraid. Was never swayed by drugs, but loved the brew, caps ripping hooray. He used to lick his gum and tray for fun, he hid it away. And looked into the mirror at a demon he couldn't evade. Why he wore that suede inside his kitchen with a charade. Feeling betrayed and missing his mate and made great fate just thinking of Ray. He did not want to live cause no one loved his pigeons afraid. Decided to climb up the barn on form a sick and display. Felt so bad to breathe, achieve an animal corpse to trade. Jump off the top to chop head off red linen, nick in the cage. Blood hectic in the page, a trick of the trade, palms taken away. Greg is now a chicken egg that in his trick and so vague. So great. Chicken Egg voice done this week by Alani Fay. Join us next week on another episode of Little Ray's World. See you all then, man. All right, cool.